Fuck you. Definitive edition. Fuck you. <laughs> it's the definitive edition of the beloved classic, Devil May Cry. The, the cult hit in Ghana. Fuck you. Devil no. May Cry. The uh, movie. I don't know if you've seen it. I would like to imagine somewhere around the world, parent confusion marketing did happen at some point. I would like to say that somewhere along the lines, some poor child was given a copy uh, of the original release of this game, thinking that they were going to get Devil May Cry because their <coughs> friend said Devil May Cry was cool, and then the parent bought this. And, and then they, they got it, and they were like, wow, this is so cool. I am a, I am a young, hip kid. And I like the dubstep and shit, and this is really cool. You know what's funny though? Is this not their best game? Uh, Ninja Theory? Without any doubt whatsoever. Yeah. So there's uh, that. So usually we don't spend that much time in the options menu, except the Definitive Edition for this game is really bizarre. It came out way afterwards, and it only came out on the console. Yeah, I, I suppose it'll be important for context. To We're gonna set go up. through like a history lesson on the first bit of this. Yeah. But the original version of the game did it not have hard lock on at all? Did, was it only soft lock? Uh, I feel like that's what I remember, but I, you know, because I don't not, remember this option. Maybe. I don't remember many things, and even if I pick one, I'm gonna be wrong. So yeah. I'm just gonna not answer. So there are now two control methods. Torse. I love this stinger input method. Like how specific so, is that? So toward. What were the options? Toward toward. Toward toward. Style, yeah. Or soft lock. Or lock on. Uh, towards toward, traditional. And then target lock input is hold or toggle. We're gonna do. Hold. And, uh, this was amongst the, the, the fan updates that were on the original. Yes, that's correct. That they so, <clears throat> in. we're just gonna assume that you watched at least Devil May Cry 4, but hopefully the entire LP series that we've done, because we're gonna be going back to those for context quite a bit. But before we do that, let's start a new game. Now, what should I start with? They do less damage, select this no. mode if you don't usually play melee action games. Ooh. Devil Hunter's normal, isn't it? Devil Hunter is normal, they do moderate damage. Select this if you played other melee action games and want a bit of a challenge. And then enemies are stronger and more challenging. Select this <laughs> difficulty if you played D Devil May Cry 4 and want the full DMC experience. Now, I remember when they when the game came out, they actually talked about like they they want everyone who has ever played a Devil May Cry game mm -hmm. to pick Nephilim to start. Mm -hmm. But I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to pick Devil Hunter, which is normal. One, because I'm wildly unfamiliar with this game compared to the others. And two... What was that interview about where they first said that stuff? Oh, I don't, I don't quite remember, but I do remember they said, Don't worry, we did make the main game much easier than usual. But... You know, you can pick a harder difficulty right off the bat. Okay. Yeah, I really don't recall. See, so yeah, actually, let's see tutorial messages, yeah. shall we? Yeah. It's important to know how to defeat the blue enemies and how to defeat the red enemies. It is. It's very important. Ah. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, this... Not gonna... the lo it started with the loading screens in this one. But forget all that. We have an Unreal Engine game. I mean, do you need to set up the part where, like... After DMC4 came out and Capcom considered it to be a financial loss despite it making gangbusters money. So DMC4, the game that we all saw was rushed last time and clearly unfinished. Actually the best selling game in the series by far. Early generation title. Sold super well. Uh, what? Yes, by three and a half, four million, three four and a half point, million. Three point something. Like right no, at the gate too. Like time. it went on to sell five. You know Massive the success. Max total disappointment. This is the worst ever. We projected uh, Call of Duty numbers. Projected 11 million. No, this is not a veiled threat. And this is a direct one. In a fune, running things at the time with the its development, will be on your said, head. "I know why I will make sure our hardcore Japanese power, action series failed." And hated. Wasn't Western enough? Wasn't Western enough? Is that clear enough? Hey, you see these guys? These Ninja Theory guys. They Friday know what's what. Then. They made action games. They made the Heavenly you Sword and Enslaved. Mr. President. No, I haven't played any of them. And none of you have either, probably, on the team. 
Let's give it to them. And when they come back with the reboot character that looks too similar to the existing Dante, too similar to the existing world, almost as if it could fit right in, tell them to shake things up. You shove that shit. You, like, we make fun of... Uh, we make fun of uh, everybody at Ninja Theory for that Alucine. fucking hilarious what? PowerPoint son of the about how spot. Dante is not a gay cowboy. Mm -hmm. But they were actually explicitly told to change, to change it as far as the they possibly could. Him. The attitude they with, the, with Tameem and stuff war. just came a little later. Yes. But when yes. Intro cutscene. Uh, is his totally his like got bear. the president C by the balls He's and the, CEO. The, the world is his heart. bitch. Um, there is a, uh... And, and, and Sparta was a, there, was a fuck. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but there is gonna be a subtle undercurrent of anti-capitalist imagery in this game. It's kinda subtle. Yep. You yep. might miss it. Sparta, that, that son of a bitch. That, that fucking demon hero that we, uh, we now he know. To, remember, he woke up to justice. And, and, and then he woke up to being into CBT. And then that was that. And then we get shots of him all tied up. Oh man, the tone of this game is just so awful. That's correct. CBT Pat stands for cock and ball torture. So see, when you when you get S rank with, with Sparta, it actually says CBT. See, I was really fucking confused. Yeah. Because CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah, it's that too. Um it was like, oh he got really into like self talk? No, 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 no. Cock and ball torture. Oh, okay, I yep. see. Yep, 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 yep. That's what. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that somebody on the development team saw a movie once, and it was called They Live. <laughs> okay, yeah. And they saw that part mm -hmm. where. Follow uh, uh, Roddy Roddy Piper's trying to get uh, Keith David to put on the glasses. And he won't put on the glasses. But then when he puts the glasses on, he can see words on the buildings. I will say this, that they are absolutely achieving their, um, whatchamacallit, uh, their thesis statement. Yeah. Right? Like, the design, the feel, like, uh, 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 Eastern European fucking hobo punk. Yeah. Right? Like, it's absolutely writhe with that so let's attitude. So let's take Dante from Devil May Cry, a character who Trish, in one of the endings, even makes fun of him for not being able to get the girl ever. And let's have the very first thing he does is he bangs a bunch of strippers. You know why? Because that's cool. That's so cool. That's what he does. God damn, that's cool. He's this kind of cool, not that kind of cool. Yeah, man. He's not wholesome cool. And he's virile, and he's still got into pizza, though. Yep. So, probably my favorite um, change between the two Dantes, the one that's m the most ridiculous. Well, they, way back in the Devil May Cry 1 LP, you the pointed out you saw there that Dante is the kind of cool hero that doesn't need to smoke to be cool, right? He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, what was it? Smoke, drink, or swear. Right? Doesn't need to do that to be cool. He's just effortlessly cool, is what, is what right? they're making, yeah. In the very first shot of action in the first trailer for this game, yeah. Dante is putting a cigarette out on a monster's face. Well, because he's, because Tyler Durden. <laughs> Right? That's a different kind of cool. And I yeah, mean, that's is, even a Tyler Durden shot. Yeah, that right. is a Tyler Durden shot. You, yeah. you were careless. You left a trail. Um, now he's on to you. Camille's Dante was even the, the kind that the would, uh, you'd want to go, you'd want to go gambling with him or something, and like, he, he'd play tricks on everybody. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, here you go. Now, he's dragging you into limbo. Oh, cool. Now, Ninja Theory is also uh, known for their mocap cutscenes. Which their mocap tech and Andy Circus use is phenomenal. It's amazing. And it's the reason why a lot of their conversation moments and a lot of their um, just basic people people just talking scenes, like they, they, they're very natural. Yes. You know, and the way people deliver their lines is very natural, and I always give them uh, huge credits for that. Because and there, and uh, I was actually just about to point out 
um, is that a lot of people have wanted people for us to play this for a while. Yeah. But it's not all going to be wagging fingers. No, 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 look at this. He grabs his shirt, and then look at the strategically placed slice. You know? That's actually a pretty good shot <laughs> That's a for Dante. This, this is a very Dante moment right here. Absol this is absolutely, totally appropriate. Yeah. No one's going to say it's not. And this game's visual design vacillates wildly between edgy, soupy trash and, like, legitimately amazing. Mm -hmm. the, limb, the exploding limbo world stuff. They uh, also learn how to tell you what the enemy names enemy are. Enemy introductions. Debuting in the franchise here. Yeah, weird, huh? There's a lot of stuff that you're actually gonna see uh, in this carry over to five because Itsuno actually really likes this game. I mean... This was actually a really genuinely impressive first... You know what? I'm gonna just fuck around here. Genuinely <laughs> impressive first room. I remember especially when I played it on PC, one of the best PC optimized games I've ever played. Ran at fucking three million frames a second. And look at that shiny Unreal Engine floor. Look at it. Um, now, again, uh, we're gonna be pointing out tons of things that I think are like the fact that this definitive edition is way better because way better in fact at some point i want you to get a goddamn change log out because it's not about the, the like the edginess and the and the, the the plot world changing and everything about dante not being the dante we came to love that's is, one thing is one thing but it was going hand in hand with the fact that there was some really really glaring oversights design wise Yep. Warbs. And, uh, what ended up happening was there was a, on the PC release, fans basically just modded the shit out of it. They sure fucking did. To make the game have a lot of things that Devil May Cry needs. Now, Warbs. For example, you might see that I just hit SS. Now, we're playing, this is really important to point out, because there's various different ways you can play this game. We're going to be that. playing the special edition without the, uh, I forget the name of the mode, but there's a mode you can turn on that essentially changes it to be more like old Devil May Cry. No, this is what I would call the stock definitive edition, mm -hmm. in which this is the halfway point between the two. But there was another, there was another option to make it even more traditional? Yeah, it, it, uh, increases star meter degradation and adds other pro, uh, other, um, other aspects like that. But I thought we should go with what is essentially going to be the real experience off for most people. Which also includes an enormous amount of design changes. So style meter degradation in the first game was one of the biggest It was hilarious. Flounders. It was absolutely uh, absurd. So if you guys have seen any Devil May Cry game or any character action game, you see that you're, oh shit and fuck. I chose wrong. Don't worry about that. You'd see that as you do the combo, your star meter go down as you don't do the combo anymore. Yes? Yes. And not so bad. In uh, the original DMC Devil May Cry, it was, let's say, a little lax on that degradation. And it did not have, uh, to my knowledge, any uh, repeat. Uh, functionality in that it would not penalize you for repeating the same thing over and over. So there was no, uh, like, move degradation, move repeat degradation. So, in fact, if you got one or two enemies together and just started slamming them with, uh, with the heavy attacks, instant triple S. Immediate. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it became very easy to get S ranks. Like, trivially so. And I remember vividly that that was the point. You know, like... To feel I, stylish. Is that it made... It made it so that the average person could feel really stylish. And you know what? That's a laudable goal. But it's also like... It's For idiots. A, but it's also like the style meter itself is a complete cosmetic non factor in terms of, like, playing and progress, right? Absolutely. It only becomes something that matters after people get good at it, and it becomes something you start paying attention to. Um, this so, game did add one thing that I do genuinely appreciate, which is a button for evade. Like, just a button. Mm. 
Um, yeah. It's useful. Yeah. Especially when enemies fire attacks like that. And, and, and I think, again, like, coming off of Bayonetta, like, we know that, like, use, having a dodge button changes the game a lot. A lot. You have a defensive option that's, uh, not just the Do I gotta move guard. Alright. What do I got currently? Hacker. This. High time. Aerial rave. And that's it, huh? I was, so I was gonna say, it's all, I feel like, uh, there's almost like... Definitely, there's something elitist about it, but there'd probably be, like, a sliding treadmill of, um... The thing you need to do to, to not die is the, your bare minimum goal in a video game. Absolutely. And then progression, and then on that on top of that, like, completion and or stylishness, whatever, little extra stuff, right? You can add in. Um, the extra stuff, the idea of having a style meter on top of regular gameplay is there for, like, people that are like, I'm gonna fucking work on this extra thing because I've already got the basics down so much so that I don't need to worry about it. Um, slightly different in this series. But when you go forward in time and it becomes, like, a thing that people really like about the series, it becomes more important to make people that are getting those goals feel like they're getting them, even though they're still completely optional and useless. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's been a... Uh, there was a... Uh, it's like making achievements easier to get. This game got a lot of people rallying behind it still. Like, there is a, con a, a significant contingent of people that were very disappointed that this did not get the follow-up, that instead uh, the classic series got the follow-up with five. And a lot of those folks are in the games business as well. And I can only imagine that part of the reason this game got such a dedicated following, particularly in the games press, is one, it was actually Western and was not a Japanese game, and two, was way easier to feel confident in. Yeah. Just oh. hilarious, way, so much easier. Also, uh, Ninja Theory's games have, like, uh, uh, they, they made an impact in the West, and, like, yeah. people were like, yo, Heavenly Sword, yo, uh, uh what is it? Uh, un not Uncharted. Uh, Uncharted Dawn, yeah, totally. Fucking, what's it called? I've never played it or seen enslaved. it. Enslaved. I've literally, I've never seen it running. Enslaved. Yeah, enslaved. The game about Journey to the West. It's not Journey to the West. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and before um, Senua's sacrifice later on. But uh, yeah, man. So like, Nin Ninja Theory was a name that carries weight in the West hey. as well. So of course people are gonna pay. Good ass that shit, thing. Vital Star. Look at that. Fucking Vital Star. But it was also after a long time of Devil May Cry not having anything come out. Yeah, and so having there nothing. Was, so nothing going on. So there's that groundswell from the original fan base combined with. The, the the western take. So we had the style that. issue. We had uh, we had enemy difficulty issue. You had some boss fights that weren't very well tuned. You had um, some just busted busted shit. But I would say that what you did have was almost designed for IGNs and GameSpots. Yeah, that's what I was, love it. That's what I was trying to get to early because it's pure set pieces, right? Yep. Everything that you did get is just these cinematic, like, set piece things, and, you know, I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with I a mean, good set piece when you're in the middle of, uh, when, when, like, you got verses in between them, but it, it was really interesting to see that, like, that's what's gonna leave a Oh, no. What's gonna... Oh, hey, look, I got an upgrade point. Is that... That's a weird way to do it, but I like it. I actually genuinely upgrade like it. points. Where it's just you earn singular points and, and you cash in on moves. So traditional RPG, uh, or Western RPG upgrading? No, no, traditional RPG upgrading. Okay. Just get, uh, just get your unlock point, right? So yeah, you got you got the easier game. You had a, a Western edgy toe. Oh, fuck, I didn't even know that was a thing. Look at that. Uh, Set pieces, though. You have some busted shit. The biggest distractions ever. So what ends up happening? They're great. Some well, they're great. One of my favorite set pieces of all time is in this video yeah. game. Yeah. So, uh, classic fans kind of tear it apart. They are unkind to this game, and it gains a, a bizarre reputation as a good game, but not a good Devil May Cry game. It would have been a, a good. Uh, it would have been fine if it wasn't called Devil. It would have been an astonishing clap your hands for Ninja Theory game if they did call it Devil May Cry. Right. But. The problem that ends up permeating, and ultimately the tone of this LP being what it is, is the fact that there was a level of 
Pops, Venom, and Vitriol for the original fan base. That is kind of weird. That everyone was like, that's, it's, what's up it's, with that? It's not even that it's, I, 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 like, not the word, what I'm looking for. Like, in some cases, is even founded. It's just baffling that it's so ever-present. And it brings the same flavor that Reboot the Guardian Code does, where you're like, well, then if you don't like me, then who's Submit this- Submit to debt, Wooly. Yeah. Submit to debt. See, like I said, subtle. <laughs> it's gonna well, be like, subtle. Like, you- I'm the person you want to buy this game, right? Yeah. So then, who is this for? Shut if up. you don't want the people that care about that stuff, you know? And I guess it's like you want the people that care, but also don't, like, hate on what you're doing, or- perhaps don't care as much. <laughs> now, one of the features that this, this brought to the series, which is genuinely fantastic, is this triangle button. Yes. Which we're getting in the form of the void. Yeah, DMC which 5. you load in. Yeah. And then you will be able to try any particular move that shows up. Which again, fantastic. Bayonetta though, right? Did Bayonetta have that? Bayonetta had Bayonetta had the the, the quote unquote training room type thing. Mm -hmm. Bayonetta had the, the intros to the enemies. You know what I mean? And and used like you said the stinger type. Like there's a lot of stuff. Hey where guys, hey guys at home, buy stinger. Yeah. Quality you of played Nightmare Cry game. Buy stinger. Quality of life upgrades that would have been weirdly absent in a post Bayo world because Bayo did bring a lot. Dodge button. Yeah. Or or uh, what angel dodge I believe. Right? Yeah, Angel and Demon Dog. Yes, because what this game also does is uh, you can dodge in the air, by the way, which is genuinely nice. It's not that it's not it's not so much that Dante is, is just half demon. He's got an angel button and a oh, demon well, button. Oh, we're gonna get to yeah, 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 yeah. Divide your controller into. So, like I was trying to say, you had all these weird little sh things, and genuinely uh, uh, appreciated by the fan base by as its own game, but not as the main cry game. And then they released the definitive edition, which. Shockingly enough, was completely rebalanced, retooled, and added I'll just a ton of shit that fixed it, made it a generally well, better game. To my knowledge, mainly due to one or two people on development. But 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 let's be real, they grabbed the fan mods, the, and then went, okay, yeah, that's good. Let's which I which I suspect is why the game uh, does not have a DE release on PC. Because there's mods because, already there. Because all there. Already, you were already able to turn it into yeah. it. So, I, so fans I, basically I, took I, it and I, made... I love this concept. If no one can see what's actually it, happening. Uh, granted, they just completely lifted it from Bayonetta. But, you know, it's still great. Yeah. And good stinger, too. Has a lot of, lot of cooldown on it. But it really pops. Um... Yeah, the, 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 uh, what were we saying just before that came up? I forget. I don't know. Talk about how the game's weird? Because it's fucking weird. No, the, that, the mods. That's it, the mods. Yeah, the mods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the one guy, one dude, uh, I don't remember the name at the time because it's been years, but there's one dude that made a ton on his own, and, uh, yeah, essentially, like, it was just, like, the definitive edition was like, let's put back the stuff that fans of the traditional series want it's one of as those gameplay, including, um, most hilariously, a red jacket and white hair, hair all the time mode yeah. to make Dino, or Dante as he's known. By the way, Dino stands for Dante name only for those of you who are Dante aware. just simply means don't. Don't this day. But you can make this Dante look like the old Dante. Which, you know, is the, the ultimate hilarious thing, given the fact that, again, some of that, like, weird venom for the old stuff... Good timing on that point, by the way. We're going to be dealing with something game. like that relatively soon. And maybe it was just meant to be a joke. Maybe it wasn't meant to be taken as an insult. Right? It's, a po it's entirely possible that I could see someone being like, Hey, man, people took that way too seriously. Well, you know what? We'll never know what was in the heart. Of whoever put that into the game. No one knows what was in that pipe. Nobody knows. <laughs> but it's, it's all up to you, the viewers at home, to decide. So this game has a, a bunch of secret missions, and it also has keys and lost souls. 
So I earned a key earlier, which I will use here. I can tell you right now, I don't know where the, like, fucking 99% of these things are. I'm gonna miss almost all of them. You know what? I think you're okay. So, uh... Airball. Yeah. They only take damage in there. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, Dino's capacity for floating is way higher than any other character in any it's other DLC. It's pretty good. He's big fly man. It's pretty good. Yeah. Especially once you get the, uh, the, the caliber equivalent. I need or, or, or I the, need or, roulette. Or the I need. roulette. Roulette. Yeah, or the roulette equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Two, three. Oh, wow, I don't even have enough. I know people like, I, I know that like Dante has caught on and uh... It's just easier to say. El Senor Dante. And, hey, look at uh, that, I beat the secret mission. Also... No, Dante El Exterminados del Deminos. Uh, yes, there's Deminos. that. Uh, also, Big Fuck You Man has caught on as well. Fuck you. But I always liked Dino. I always, I, it's a simple, clear, you know. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but his jacket is... His jacket is black and red instead of red and black. And also, his hair is not white. And he has an upside-down Union Jack on his jacket. Well, I don't know about you guys, but if I have a character that has a slight... So, I, I, can't, that's... I can't even joke about it enough because I'm so frustrated by it. When the original... And I'm talking original trailer, you go back and look at that reveal trailer of Meth Head Dante mm -hmm. came out. There was a kind of almost sarcastic here. shrug that was like he doesn't even like not only does he look like a completely different person, he doesn't even have white hair. Yeah. Yeah. This somehow turned into what might be the most infuriating of missing of the points I've ever seen in video games. Which was, you You guys are just mad that he doesn't have the white hair. Like, no, dude. I'm mad because this isn't the same character and it's not made by the same developer and it, it hey, doesn't look Union very Jack good. Hey, Union, so. Union Jack patch means that's the emblem of punk rock, punk rock right that there. Does, that does mean that. Right? And anyone who says otherwise, go back and look at Kamiya's glove. But the, the goofiest thing is that old picture of Kamiya standing next to his mom on... Looking like a character from one of his games. He looks like this Dante. <laughs> I like mean, clean, no, clean no, cut. no. But he looks a lot closer to this Dante than he does his own. I, I, yes, but I, I think he looks like something else entirely. But he, he's there. He's almost like Gene and some other stuff going on, but he's, he looks fucking rad. It's very cool. Oh, there's another Lost Soul. Thank you. So yeah, we've moved into the interior set piece. Yeah, look at this. Uh, I, I can hear a tone in your voice when you describe the word set piece. Excellent. By the way, Good. set piece. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Set, there we go. Set piece. Mm -hmm. What is that tone, yeah, Wooly? It's explain your your feeling toward the set piece. It's complex because I like them. I also enjoy a good set piece. But I don't like when they blind you to other things that are easy that you that you should be paying attention to slash that you would notice. Like I don't like when they're used to mask things, right? Yeah. Set piece as a uh, a really hype as fuck location for something that is good and quality such as Bayonetta fighting on a fallen clock tower. Very stylish. Awesomely rad. One might even say sadistic. One could say that. Uh, however, uh, set piece as a look over here, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, is, ah, uh, you know? And it's, and, 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 and a lot of the times it's hard to distinguish between the two immediately. And so uh. that's what you're hearing. I completely agree. Honestly, a good set piece is fantastic. It, it's a cherry on top for your action sequence, right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <sighs> I 
Huh? Not in a million years. Now oh. we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> later. Be Not in a million. Oh